sometimes he was, what the fuck are you doing? How can you miss that ball? You need to focus here. And sometimes he, he told me like, okay, take it easy. We will get this. I, will, I assure you, we will get this match. Welcome to Båstad on the Swedish West Coast. This is the mecca of tennis in this country. But it's also becoming quite famous for its paddle because World Paddle Tour has been played here two years in a row. This is also the home of Daniel Vindal, the number one paddle player in this country right now. And we're going to hook up with him. Follow us. Perfect parking, huh? Yes, couldn't be better. <laughs> so where are we? We are in uh, Bostad and we are at uh, Drivan. 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 As we say in uh, this uh, Skåne accent. Yeah. So. Uh, Do you want to show me around? Yeah, for sure. It's multiply hours we have been getting here on the court, on in the gym. We have been here so much. Yeah. So. Uh, it's always a nice feeling to uh, be here. Well, I had my best results on the clay. You did? Yeah. So I had uh, I had European Championship in doubles, yeah. uh, gold, and I had a bronze uh, place in singles wow. when I was 18. And uh, Emma was the best player in Sweden yeah. of the girls' side. Yeah. And uh, we were, yeah, we were on the same uh, uh, tournaments and. We went to the finals often, both of us. So. Did you play mixed together? Never, actually. <laughs> Why was that? Only mixing paddle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Emma, yeah. you've been together for a long time. When did you meet? Yeah. Uh, I'm, we met when we were 11, I think. 11? Yeah. yeah, with the tennis. And I always had a crush on Daniel. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, 10 years ago, yeah, 10 years ago. Yeah, you asked me if you want to be your girlfriend, and then I said yes. Yeah. yeah. And you still got a crush, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's wondering now, what was Daniel like when he was younger? Was it the same kind of guy, or did it change? I mean, he was always very serious with his tennis, and now he's always like so serious with his paddle. Like, every single thing needs to be perfect yeah. when it comes to paddle. <laughs> no, same with tennis. Maybe a bit older and dumber, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> a little bit wiser, I would say, actually. <laughs> yeah. Now is it uh, really classic soil, uh, especially in the tennis and and nowadays in the pedal as well. Um, so here's the center court uh, in Bostad, uh, where I where I was the uh, first time as a kid and now as a paddle player. So let's bring back some memories. Now it's clay down here, yeah. but last summer there was a paddle court here and uh, you know, a lot of people here watching a big final in the Eurofinals Invitational. Mm -hmm. And you were playing with Mike Yanguas. Yeah. One of the best young players in the world. Mm -hmm. What was it like? I mean, uh, the whole circuit together with Mike, it was, uh, I was feeling that I was uh, learning uh, a lot from him. Me and him was uh, speaking, uh, speaking a lot uh, before the match, during the match, after the match, and it was, it was, I was learning a lot from him, um, especially uh, on the bench and how he communicated with me. He, sometimes he was, what the fuck are you doing? How can you miss that ball? You need to focus here. And sometimes he, he told me like, okay, take it easy. We will get this. I, will, I assure you, we will get this match. Yeah, and, so and last would... year was only 19 years old, but still yeah. so secure. Exactly. He was, uh, he was uh, the big, uh, uh, how do I say, the, the big... Uh, leader of the team? Yeah, the big leader of the team. Yeah. And, uh, and that is not, some, uh, is not something I prefer because I want to be the leader uh, that, that's in my DNA yeah. so I need to I needed to take uh, take my learner hat on and uh, yeah 
absorb everything he had to tell me because he's still one of the best in the world and he's playing amazing pedal and have, uh, have an amazing experience to uh, uh, adapt to. I'm wondering, like watching Danny play on this center court, what, what is it like for you, Emma? It's always fun watching him play. He has so much fun. And I'm, I'm not so nervous when you play pedal. More when you played tennis, I was nervous. So I feel kind of safe watching him. <laughs> oh, but um, yeah, I feel uh, a lot of support when I'm playing um, uh, because of Emma, because uh, she maybe she gives me the look during the match. And I um, in some sort of situation, I need that look and to like focus on what's, uh, what's uh, important in the match. Yes, so here we have one of the first court in, uh, yeah, in Bostad in Sweden, and uh, it was uh, almost the first time I uh, uh, try paddle here. And I could see Novak Djokovic playing on this one, yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It was uh, many tennis stars that uh, that uh, came to Bostad uh, to play the tennis tournament and to try uh, at at something at uh, some point uh, the paddle as well. But now there are thousands and thousands of courts in Sweden, but this one was important, I guess, because this was in Tennis Mecca. Yeah, exactly. The, it was here the, the, first, uh, like the first big court uh, that was close to the big center court of the tennis and the big tournaments. And so this was the court that was some sort of a start up. Uh, holy soil. So, what makes paddle so much more fun than tennis? I mean, the typical answer is like it's more social and it's more fun and... Uh, you have a partner. Yeah, you have a partner, but the thing is, uh, a lot of people is friendly in paddle. Uh, I mean, outside the court and uh, most of the time inside the court as well, uh, except of some players and coaches <laughs> and you know. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but the thing is like, I feel it's much more of a relaxed, uh, relaxed feeling and atmosphere and uh, you show your true colors. There's one more good thing, you can always blame your partner if exactly, you lose. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> That's in the tennis, best thing with partner. In tennis it's uh, quite, uh, quite hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you're standing there alone and uh, miss the shot, well, it was my fault. <laughs> but now it's him. Exactly. Always, always the other guy. Always. No, but uh, you do it as a team and uh, you win as a team and lose as a team. It's been a great day with you guys. Now the last question, Danne. What does the future hold for you? What do you think? Uh, I, th I think accept uh, of uh, develop paddle in Sweden uh, and to be a pioneer for, for the Swedish paddle. I really believe for my own sake that uh, I will go for the top 20 uh, players in the world and I, I really believe that it's uh, possible uh, to be there uh, and uh, it, it will not be possible uh, without my, uh, my best, better half and uh, I really believe uh, that we can make it there. Good luck both of you, yeah? Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Bye. Bye. Recently, I've been thinking about my ass. People keep telling me the ass is so important in paddle. I'm getting closer to 50, and I can see my ass is getting flatter and weaker for every day. I think I need to do something about this. Hey, that's a great ass, man. Thanks, bro. Sophia. Yeah? I think I need to work on my ass. Yeah, I know. Come on, I have some exercise for you. Super. This is the hip thrust. It's exactly what you need to get your ass in shape. Do it three times 12. Okay. And here I want you to do the lunge walk. Good. 90 degrees. Oh. Take it slow. Good work. Do this a couple times a week and then we'll be fine. What is he doing? Is he posting his ass? I don't know. Thanks a lot for watching our show. I hope you love 
Padre Loco. And also remember to subscribe and click the bell button to get notifications. And of course, follow us on Facebook and Instagram. See you there.